Thickermanpair.com. We're all almost together. Hey, Ed Stefan here with Thickerman Pair. A lot of you are asking, hey, what can I do to my transmission to make it last longer? It's awesome as it is, we know it is. Well, really, there's three things to understand. There's issues with the solenoids. There's issues with the pressure switch or switches. And there's issues with filtration. So the issues with the solenoids. The issues with the solenoids really have to come down to how the transmission shifts now. It really can be a problem and it can cause your truck to start flaring. If you want more information on this, hop on Google sometime and just do a search on 3-5 shift flare power stroke and you'll see guys talking about a problem. The problem that they're having is they're like, hey man, I was, I was going to work this morning or I was going to the job this morning and I got on the freeway to get there and I was watching my tack and it just seemed like the tack kind of just blipped up a little bit. It's almost like somebody put my truck in neutral for a second and I thought I just imagined it, but then on the way home, yeah, it happened again. This is bad mojo. Now the guys that say, well, okay, yeah, 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 we'll worry about this some other time, then it moves on to step two. Step two of the problem is your tow haul light starts flashing and you lose overdrive. Now you won't be able to get home yet, but recognize that you've lost overdrive. And you're like, hmm. So you shut off the truck and you turn it back on again and hey, tow haul light's gone, overdrive's back and life is good until it happens again. Now the third thing that happens is that, um, say you've been waiting even longer and now all of a sudden you start the truck and the truck just stays with the light flashing and tow haul the entirety of the time. And now it's just game over. Now it's just too late. So what can you do to mitigate this exposure? What you can do is you can go ahead and drop the transmission pan. When you do that, what you'll see is you'll see seven solenoids staring at you. They just look like small Coke cans. I'll show you a picture in the corner here. Now, the fact of the matter is they're just held on with circlips, so it's not hard. And in a different video, we'll talk about exactly how to, how to change these solenoids and these other things we'll be talking about. But what the answer is, is to recognize that um, if you change out two solenoids, there's an EPC solenoid, you change it, you'll double the line pressure, yay. And then there's a direct solenoid, and that's ported, so it's a fancy word for it's got bigger holes drilled in it. Some guys will say, well, I just changed out to the aftermarket direct solenoid, it didn't make a hell of a difference. Well, why? Because you didn't adjust your line pressure. And so you've got bigger holes, and you've basically dropped your line pressure as a result of, of, uh, of not first raising it, and now allowing more fluid to flow. Well, that's not what you want. So really you want to change out both of these. Now, the good news is changing out the direct solenoid is just held on with a circlip, no big deal. You pull that circlip out of there, you just got the electrical connection, you button everything back up again, you're golden. The EPC solenoid though is a tiny bit more work. You actually have to go ahead and drop the solenoid body. And before I lose you, recognize it's a super simple process. Just watch this other upcoming video. It'll, it'll show you everything that, that, that you need to know. It's not difficult. The only tool that you will need that you might not already own is an inch pound torque wrench. 89 inch pounds, yeah, not optional. So uh, I think just keep track of what, what holes the bolt came out of and off to the race as you go. You do disturb a, um, a valve body gasket. So you're gonna to wanna to pick up one of those. It's like less than four bucks. It's available on our website. There's links down below here. And then also um, there is a uh, 10 millimeter uh, socket you're gonna to wanna to take out, of course, our favorite socket ever. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and take out the bolt that um, holds on the electrical connection on the passenger side of the uh, transmission towards the front there. So you take that bolt out, you drop the solenoid body, you muck with the gasket, okay, fine. But um, then there's a through connector O-ring that you're gonna wanna replace as well. That's also available in the link below or there's also a kit. So imagine that. But uh, regardless, you, uh, you drop the solenoid body and that allows you to, to get the little pack of wires out of the way and uh, therefore get your EPC solenoid up out of there. So you change out the EPC solenoid, you change out the direct solenoid, you button it back up again, and you are quadrupling the flow of transmission fluid to the clutch that handles that shift from third to fifth gear. Guys, this can only be a good thing. And so um, highly, highly, highly encourage that anybody do this. Now, depending on the model year of your truck, so if you are a 03 or early, early build 04 person, 
uh, you've just got uh, you've got five uh, pressure switches inside the solenoid body, unless somebody's fingers have been in the cookie jar before. If you are a late build of or a newer, you've only got one uh, pressure switch. These are functioning switches that are in the solenoid body, but they don't do anything for you. Why? No version of Ford software ever, not the ECM software, not the TCM, not the PCM software, ever referenced the output value of these switches. Really, they should be plugs. The issue is that they are a plastic and rubber composite, these things, and they're degrading with time. And so one day they're just gonna blow out of, the, out of the solenoid body. Well, that's not what you want. You're gonna start your pump for flow. You're gonna cavitate your pump, and this just can't be good. So drop the 15 bucks and get a, uh, or whatever the going rate is, uh, changes obviously with inflation, but whatever. Right now it's 15 bucks. But um, get the little plug, picture of it from the corner again, and uh, go ahead and, and pull the, the switch or the switches up out of there, or maybe you've got a plastic plug today, pull that up out of there, replace it with one of these billet aluminum plugs and move on. One less thing to worry about. You're gonna replace all five, you're gonna replace one of them, whatever, but you wanna get those things up out of there. Now, <clears throat> if you just stop here, you're already dramatically prolonging the life of what you got, okay? So yay team, good job out of you. What you could elect to do <clears throat> is you could elect to understand that the 6.4 Power Stroke guys, the 2008 and 2009 guys, they've got the same transmission that you've got. So sweet. Uh, so I should give you warm fuzzies about, hey, you know, do I have an awesome transmission? Can it handle the torque and the horsepower and all this kind of stuff? Extra 90 foot pounds of torque to stock on a 6.4, so yeah. But they have a deeper transmission pan. Now, the purpose of the deeper transmission pan is to support a physically larger filter. So what you guys have, what you guys have in your 6.0 is you've got a 149 micron screen. What they have is they have a 15 micron pleated filter, so essentially 10 times finer fluid filtration. Would highly encourage you to think about going ahead and replacing uh, your 149 micron screen with the 15 micron filter, and then you can slap on a deeper pan, and life is super good. Um, and so yes. So we're changing out the solenoids, the, both of them, the EPC and the direct, we're changing out anywhere from one to five pressure switches, so we got that. And now we're changing out this 149 micron screen and putting a 15 micron filter up in there. So that is the whole version, as it will, of, of things to consider. Now, what you could elect to do is you could elect to take things a step further. Um, it depends on how many uh, miles are on your truck, really, how many miles are on the fluid. What we're not a fan of is we're not a fan of doing a hot transmission flush. Uh, we sell transmissions, very frankly, from like everyone in this dog, but we'd much rather not have to sell you one. So what we would recommend that you do is as follows. Step one, find a suitable container, of course, take the drain plug out of the pan, whatever comes out, comes out, recycle that, okay? Drop the pan. Fine, change out the solenoids, perfect. Change out this, this pressure switch or these pressure switches, perfect. Pull, oh, you've already pulled out the 149 micron filter, that, that screen, to get access to the solenoids. So just pop in that 15 micron uh, pleated filter and then button everything back up with a deeper pan, with the deeper 6.4 pan. Or there's a, a version from Dural that, uh, that's got um, Venturi tubes um, through it. And so it'll, most guys see, well, anywhere from like 10 to 50 degree drops in tranny temps for the manufacturer. So we're gonna say most guys see an average of like 35 degree drops in trans temps. Pretty way impressive. Or you could also use the opportunity to migrate to a billet aluminum pan if you wanted to. And, but that's primarily, the billet aluminum pan conversation is primarily if, um, if you have a pension for doing four wheel drive boosted launches, in which case I tell you to stop it. But if you're not gonna stop it, it's a know thyself conversation. You will get dramatic increases in torsional rigidity in your transmission case if you go with a, with a, billet, um, with a billet or a cast aluminum pan. So um, yeah, you want your whole day ruined, it'll probably be a bad week. You need a transmission because you snapped the case. And so if you do that, um, yeah, they won't even accept your old one as a core, so it gets expensive. So please don't do that. Uh, but regardless, you uh, you go ahead and you change out the, the, the solenoids, you change out the, the pressure switch or switches, you put the 15 micron filter in, you put the pan in your choosing um, up inside there, you refill it with fresh fluid, and, and then you go for a drive. Now, I'm going to tell you that if you've got more than, oh, we'll call it 50,000 miles on your rig, and most of you do, recognize what's happened. 
for the first time ever, you've got fluid filtration to speak of. Now, you might say, well, Ed, hey, hold it, you know, wait a minute here. You're forgetting to talk about something. You're forgetting to talk about the little five micron bypass filter behind the front bumper, affectionately known as a toilet paper, uh, toilet paper filter. Yeah, no, I'm not actually forgetting to talk about that. The issue is it's a five micron filter. Its whole life, it's been asked to filter five to 149 microns. That's Yeoman's work for any filter. Probably that filter's in full bypass. It's been in full bypass. It's been clogged for like ever. It's just a little itty bitty guy, okay? Um, in addition to that, um, recognize that, yeah, while it's there, uh, I suppose not in addition to that, but uh, recognize that, that while it's there, it's been fully clogged, but it's in bypass, so it's not hurting anything. But really, you've only ever had 149 microns worth of filtration. That's what I'm trying to convey. And now you're going to put a 15 micron filter in and you're going to go for a drive. There's a little valve that opens up when your trans gets to near full operating temp, and that lets even more fluid go through. So what we recommend is go ahead and do all this. Drop the pan, put the solenoids, put the, put the, uh, the, the built plugger plugs, put the 15 micron filter, put the pan up, refill it with fresh fluid. By the way, Motocraft LV is what you want to use. Uh, I would argue that even if you can get SP, the original stuff that came in there, LV superseded it. I've used Motocraft LV. And by the way, I wouldn't change brands of fluid. Not unless you're putting a whole new transmission in. I'm not a fan of mixing and matching. But, you know, if you want to, that's fine. Um, you know, we're, we're dealers for both Amsoil and for Shapers. They're very, very, very quality products. We can hook you up. But the, um, the short answer, though, is that when you button everything up again and you fill it with fresh fluid, and just whatever came out of the training uh, pan is what you want to replace it with. So eight, eight and a half quarts, unless you're going with a deeper pan from like Mag High Tech or somebody. But what you do is you go ahead and you refill it with fresh fluid. Go for like an hour long drive and then come back. And I know it's work, I get it. But recognize that in that hour long drive, you just did 100, 150,000, 200, quarter million miles, whatever miles are in your truck. You just did all that filtration? Yeah, all at once. Isn't there a high likelihood that that filter is clogged or partially clogged and now you're starving your transmission um, pump for flow. Well, this is not what you want. So rather than take a chance on that, strong suggestion to you is take the hour long drive, come on back and uh, find a clean container because we're going to reuse the fluid on round two. Find a clean container, take off the, uh, the, the tranny plug off your brand new pan, drain it into the clean container, drop the pan, and then after you've dropped the pan, Go ahead and throw away that brand new filter that's probably some version of clogged. Put a fresh filter in there. Put the pan back on. Again, 89 inch pounds is not optional. Oh, and by the way, I didn't tell you this earlier. <clears throat> when you drop the pan, it's a uh, M6 by 1.0 or the threads. Uh, find a tap and by hand, by hand, by hand, by hand. Go ahead and run that tap up there and just clean the threads out in your transmission case. And that way it's one less thing to worry about. You don't want to be putting a helicoil in your tranny van. That would stink. But 89 inch pounds, inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. Um, and if you don't do this for a living, certainly the little $10 Harbor Freight inch pound torque wrench is gonna be, you know, it'll, it'll get you there, so that, that's fine. But button it back up again with a, with a brand new 15 micron filter, fill it up with the fluid that you just got through draining. Now, at this step, go ahead and change out the filter behind the front bumper and its corresponding O-ring. Now you're relegating that filter to five to 15 microns worth of filtration, so yay team. And then you've got 15 micron full flow filtration, and now you're good for like 30,000 miles. Go enjoy your truck, right? Um, now, if you are watching this video and you've already got shift flare, you're already seeing this problem. That's how you even know this is a thing. You Googled shift flare and you found this video, right? Um, what I would tell you is recognize the band-aid that this is. You're not going to put clutch material back on your clutch pack. The issue is not the hundred and fifty odd dollars of the clutch pack. The issue is you got to drop the transmission to do it, right? So less than awesome. But you will buy yourself some additional time. Most guys, most, not all, most guys see a complete elimination of the shift flare issue. Tow haul lights never coming on anymore. Everything's copacetic. They commonly get about an extra thirty thousand miles out of their out of their tranny before it's you know game over. But you know, when's the best time to plant a tree? Uh, that'd be 20 years ago. When's the next best time? Uh, today seems good. So that's the commercial for doing this now before you have a problem. And by the way, after you do this, you've moved your weakest link. This will always be a weakest link. Even on a fully built transmission, there's a weakest link. There just is. 
discussion of where it is. But after you do this, your weakest link moves to the input shaft. Well, if you're snapping an input shaft, you've got a whole different set of issues. Okay, other things to understand. Um, with the transmission options, you've just done the solenoids, you've done the dummy plugs, you've done um, a plug, you've done the 15 micron filter, you changed out your bypass filter around the front bumper. Is there anything else you can do? Well, yeah. Uh, Mishimoto makes a replacement uh, tranny um, cooler. And so it pulls out the Ford stuff, you put this instead in the, in the front, that'll drop your trans temps about 10 degrees all by itself. So you could be interested in doing that. It's about 300 bucks, okay? So again, links below. Um, in addition to that, Diesel Site, one of the many companies we rep for, but we rep for everybody. So if you're looking for a single source for all your parts and stuff, yeah, we'll hook you up. And we're, a, we're an Iowa-based company, right? I mean, we, we, we don't want to sell you anything, truly don't. We just want to tell you what the options are and have you pick. Um, but uh, ultimately, Diesel Site makes a 22 micron external filter, just a spin-on filter, very nice. It's claim to fame, pretty sweet. It's claim to fame is that if your torque converter turns into shrapnel, it'll catch all the floaties before it ever reaches your main transmission. So that's only a good thing. Now, spirit of full disclosure, why might you say, eh, Diesel Site, I thank, I thank you for the idea, way cool concept, but no thanks? The way cool concept of no thanks crowd would be, hey, if you go ahead and you um, you fry a torque converter and you've got to drop, you know, you've got to pull the transmission back and drop it to change it, and you're going to pay somebody else especially to do this labor. Uh, the question is, do you want to go ahead and just have the transmission rebuilt at the same time? Well, the answer might be maybe yeah, but it's more money. And so if you just want to, you know, give yourself the option, buy the diesel site filter, we carry it, it's on thickenrepair.com. We'll take good care of you. At any rate, onward and upward. If you do this and it works for you, great. Um, leave your comments below with suggestions or thoughts or whatever. Very, very much appreciate you. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thickenrepair.com. We're all in this together.